What would make this an especially meaningful conversation for you today? Honestly, I think I just need tips on staying focused when studying and how to make the best out of my time when studying because I feel like, I mean, I work full time. So the little time that I do have to study, it's essential that I actually stay focused and grasp all the concept, uh, all the concepts that I'm trying to grasp. And I find that difficult to do these days. I don't know why. So really what, sure. what, what pulls you away from your focus while you're studying? Um, I feel like I just kind of get distracted. I kind of, when it comes to studying and sitting there for long periods of time, after about two hours, I get really just distracted. So at that point, I, I pretty much stick to practice tests. So um, when I find it difficult to study, I just revert back to just doing practice tests. Okay, so... A practice test, though, is you know, when you're doing a full five-section exam, that's about three hours. So that's more than your two-hour limit. Do you find that your focus kind of wanes towards the end of that? I mean, in the middle of it, I definitely, you know, I do definitely get tired and things of that nature. But, um, but I do, I, I still find the time to, you know, get through the entire practice test without taking too long of breaks because, you know, yeah. That's good. That's a good thing. And so for your practice test, I would just say do more of them. Do more, mm -hmm. maybe twice a week, spaced out, not on consecutive days. But endurance is a skill, is a skill that you can build with time. Mm -hmm. Right. Brain is a muscle and the focus is a muscle as well. And so you just train it by doing more of those. But then for your untimed work, if you're doing questions by type or even if you're doing individual timed sections, you don't need to overload yourself with those. It's okay for you to take breaks and frequently, even every 30 minutes or every 60 minutes. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. And then also, do you feel when it comes to studying for hours at a time, do you think it's best to focus on one area or hit um, just a little bit of each area? Like do logic games for um, an hour, do reading comprehension for an hour, or do you feel that I should do reading comprehension for two hours and the next day you go back and do logic games for three hours or how do you feel? Do you feel combined? I'm kind, of, three yeah. I'm kind of in the middle on that. I would say it's okay to have a focus on one section, but you could still mix it up a little bit. So maybe on a particular day, 50% of your focus could be on reading comp and then a little bit of games and reasoning just to mix it up a little bit so you don't get too bored or overwhelmed with one question type. Right. Okay. Um, and do you suggest, I mean, I did this and I, I pretty much wish I didn't because it was a waste of money, but do you suggest that people take the LSAT blindly before, like if they've never taken it before? Not really. There's not really any reason to do that because then you end up with either a cancellation on your record or mm -hmm. you end up with a low score. If you know right. that it's not going to be what you want it to be, I would say instead postpone if the deadline has not yet passed or else you could withdraw but I wouldn't take it just to see how you'll do because you know the results are not going to be great. Right, yeah. That's how it was for me. So the first time I ever took it. But um, yeah, I was just wondering if other people suggest doing that or if not. Um, what else do I have? Do I have any more questions for you? I take my test on November 25th. So as it gets closer to date, what do you feel is the best way to study at this point? You know, you have like a month or two if you have a month or two what's the best way to study like do you suggest studying more hours a day or maybe cut back a little bit do you feel like yourself? yeah do you do you feel like you already have a strong foundation um when it comes to studying i feel like i'm losing grip of it i feel like i'm losing control of my study um schedule i don't know if it's my job that's increasing the workload and then i don't know but yeah yeah, it very well could be. And so if, you're, if your job can be flexible with you during the final couple of weeks, that's a really good thing to get if you can. I'm asking right. more just your command of the content itself, not necessarily the time that you're putting in, but just mm -hmm. you feel like you have a good grasp of each of the major sections and each of the major question types. I feel like I could do better on reading comprehension and also... Um, I don't fully understand all of the question, the question types. So that's another thing. 
So I would say take a few weeks just to get that down. You can Mm -hmm. still do one exam a week in the meantime. Right. Next three weeks or so, one exam a week, plus brushing up on any areas that you're not decently confident in. Mm -hmm. Then that final month, hopefully you've got the foundation there because that final month should really be focused on full length timed exams, working on pacing and endurance. And if you're not there a couple of weeks before, you might want to push the test back just because you really want to have a solid grasp before you walk in or else you're not going to be reaching your fullest potential. Like you want to know what each of the question types are and how to handle each one. Right. Okay. All right. And um, I just discovered Khan Academy, so I haven't tried it yet, but I kind of want to try it because, you know, we're doing, we're moving into the digital LSAT and I feel like that might be better than the books. Um, How do you find that students do with Khan Academy when they study with Khan Academy? It's okay to get a basic familiarity with the different question types and Mm -hmm. it is online, but for some strange reason, their digital LSATs, the ones on their site, Mm -hmm. don't really mirror the actual digital LSAT. Oh, Delivering the material online. But if you want digital Mm -hmm. LSAT practice tests, LSAC has put three of them on their site. Have you seen those? No, I haven't actually. Yeah, so go on Mm familiar.lsac.org and they have already placed three exams there, exams 71, 73, and 74. And you Mm -hmm. can do them on a computer, but even better is if you could do them on a tablet. Oh, okay. So all of the LSATs will be done on tablets, not computers, when we get there. Yeah, so the actual official LSAT that you take Mm -hmm. November 25th will be on a tablet, not a computer. It'll be specifically on a 10-inch Microsoft Surface Go. And so if you have a tablet or can borrow one, just to Mm -hmm. at least do a few in that style, in that format, before you walk in, it'll help a lot. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you so much. That. Yeah, of that. course. Uh, I would definitely recommend playing around with it a little bit. Do you have a tablet or know someone who does? I have an iPad. Perfect. Yeah, so use that. If yeah. you use that, go on there. They will give you a stylus on test day, but it doesn't work that well. And so I would just get used to using your finger, honestly. Okay. Gotcha. Get used to some of the tools they have on there, like highlighting and underlining and the countdown timer. There are some unique features on the digital that you want to get used to. I did do the little, um, I think on LSAC, it provides you with a little rundown of how it's set up and how to highlight and underline everything like that. I did do that on the LSAC website. So Yeah, good. So that's something. And since you mentioned reading comp a few times, I do want to let you know that on the digital, there are no line numbers in the margin. Oh, okay. So when they ask you to revert to a sentence, they're just going to provide you with that sentence. They'll yeah, just... they'll hi- yeah, they highlight the key phrase that they gotcha. want you to look for in the passage. They give it a very like a unique turquoise kind of color, but mm-hmm. it's not going to be with an actual line number. And so your paper LSATs and your books, obviously they have line numbers, but that digital will not. Okay, got it. So for okay. those final three weeks before your test, you could actually just do those three LSATs on LSAC's website. So do like test 74 one week before, test 73 two weeks before, mm-hmm. 71 three weeks before, just that you're getting used to that. And then you, of course, you can mix, mix in paper LSATs also. And since Correct. you mentioned that you have a tablet, you, if you have access to the PDFs, you could load them onto your tablet so that you're actually seeing the questions on the screen. It's not a perfect imitation, but it's as close as you could get. Right, gotcha, I'll do that. I'm taking notes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. No, that's good. Any other questions lingering for you? What else would be useful for you right now? Um, I guess um, I think I have just more, more of an issue with timing. When I time myself, I do – when I take a time practice tel- test, I do a lot worse, obviously, than if I would have just taken it without even, you know – looking at the time or whatnot because I typically with a practice test would hit um, a 151 not timed 149 147 timed so I mean I'm seeing a little bit of improvement from the last score that I got on the LSAT but yeah obviously well, that's actually not a huge difference in score yeah it says to me the timing is not actually having that much of an impact on you which mm-hmm. is a good thing really because this is a really strictly timed exam I think right. it's just worth spending a few weeks really solidifying your understanding of the, of the different question types. So review, reviewing your books, reviewing other materials online. Maybe Khan will give you some insights. 
I've also got a ton of stuff on my YouTube channel and podcast and Instagram. And so you mm-hmm. can go on there for more free material as well. Gotcha. And do you suggest when studying um, to try the Pomodoro method where you study for 25 minutes or an hour and then take a break and then you go back? Yeah, I was actually thinking about that when you talked about studying for two hours and then kind of losing focus a little bit. That mm-hmm. would be a great way to help you mix it up a little bit and stay fresh as you're, as you're moving forward. Gotcha. Okay. I'm going to try that out. So today will be my um, first day of, you know, getting back on my study schedule. So I will definitely try these tips out. Awesome. Fantastic, Dazzy. Glad to help. What would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? Um, you were very helpful. I mean, you're very knowledgeable. I always watch your YouTube channel. And also I've seen you with the, um, I think his name is Becoming JD on the live. I watched that too. So um, I find it helpful that you gave me ways to study. You suggested the tablet and, you know, uploading the LSAT test on there. And then also, I didn't even know about the, the ones that were on the LSAT website. So I'll definitely be trying those um, practice tests, 74, 73, and 71. Yeah, perfect. So. Awesome, Dasney. Well, please keep in touch and let me know if you need anything at all as you move forward. Happy to help. Thank you so much. I appreciate the call. My pleasure. Take care. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.